YOLO everybody, this video we're going to be reviewing a few of the concepts we just talked about and I know we recently did a review, although it never hurts to do a little bit extra review, I mean even me, an elite pro at programming, is reviewing these concepts. I mean that being said, I am getting paid millions by YouTube, but we're still going to go through these and I recommend you do as well, even if you think you got these concepts down pretty solid. So this is up on my GitHub, Caleb Curry is my name, I'm going to copy this and bring it into my editor. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there! So the very first thing we talked about in this section is appropriate nesting. And Python is interesting because the indentation determines where a certain piece of code will be executed and what block it is part of. This is widely different than many other programming languages which use curly braces to determine where code is executed. Some people really like the indentation, other people do not. Personally, I like it, I think it looks nice, and it also forces you to indent properly, which in going into other programming languages, you need to have that skill as well. Even if in other programming languages such as Java, the indentation does not affect the code execution, it's still important to format your code in such a way so you can see it and know how it's gonna be executed. So Python is a great training ground for that. So just make sure you're putting things in the right spot. So here I show a really simple example of how you might make a mistake. In this first situation, we break if the language is C-sharp as we're searching for it, and we print language found. So that's where we get C-sharp found. The second one is a little bit different because it breaks in the wrong spot. It's going to break after the very first iteration no matter what. So the first iteration C-sharp is not found, so it breaks and it stops looking. So even though C-sharp is in the list, we do not get an output for this loop because it breaks too early. Now I say here Python is white space sensitive, but mm, I'm not entirely sure that's true because I can go in here and I can space this stuff out and it works fine running this and I get the same exact output. The main thing that Python is sensitive to is indentation. So it's sensitive specifically to the space at the beginning of a line. So if I added some space here and ran it, well now oh, we're gonna have some issues. Oh, it does not like that. So we're gonna bring that back, put it back to where it was and also update my comment there. So now that we understand the foundation of indentation, I think it's safe to start talking about nested if statements, which is what we talked about next. And I go through a simple example where we have a few different variables. The main one we're worried about here is the logging and logging in. This could be confusing because we're using the word logging in two different ways. The first one being logging for debugging purposes or just for informational purposes. And the second one specifically to logging in or signing into a website. So it might have been more appropriate to use the variable signing in. However, uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, right? And then we just have this name variable just to print it. It doesn't actually case on the variable name. So if we're logging in, what we're going to do is we're going to print welcome Caleb. In this case anyways, because name is Caleb. Before we print welcome Caleb, we're going to case and see if logging is turned on. If it is, we're going to write that this person is logging in. So if, for example, if you wanted to keep track of all of the logins, this is the appropriate spot where you would write this to a database or you could write it to a file or whatever it might be. We're just writing it to the terminal and that's fine in this context. But this is only going to execute if logging is turned on. So that logging can come from a configuration file. So for example, you deploy some software to people or you have some website and you're having some issues, you can turn logging on and start getting information. See when Caleb logs in, we have some errors, maybe there's something up with his account, what's different about his than everyone else's, and so forth. In certain situations, you can use nested ifs, but you could also use complex conditionals, and we show some situations here where we do just that. So here's an example of a complex conditional where we have three variables and some combination of these determine whether or not a person is invited to the party. So in the first situation, if they're under 30 or they're fun, and they like to dance. So what this means is if you're 25 and you're super boring, that's fine as long as you like to dance. Everybody who comes has to like to dance. You can put them all in one like this and then give some general output here saying you're invited to the party or you can break this into nested if statements to be a little bit more specific. 
I like to do this when I have an or and an and in the same expression, just for clarity's sake. Now for this nested if for likes to party, we can determine if the person likes to dance or not and be more specific saying something like, how could you not like to dance? Cause dancing's fun. I used to take some hip hop dance classes. I was pretty boss to be honest. Definitely gonna get back into that someday. But for now I'm gonna stick to programming cause I'm actually decent at this. So this allows us to be specific to liking to dance. And then we can have the else saying they're not invited. So those are just some more examples, whether you use nested ifs or complex expressions to be evaluated, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna let you deal with that. So next up, we got nested for loops. This is just a simple example, just as a taste of what we're going to get into next when we're gonna deep dive some of these loops here. And running this, it's just going to print zero to four, four times, one, two, three, four, one time for each iteration of this outer loop. We space them out with just a space, and then after each iteration, we print a new line just to go down to the next line right there. So that is your review. Hopefully you understand everything in this. And now let's go into the next section with confidence. So I will see you guys soon. I'm gonna go practice my hip hop dance moves, and I will see you in the next video.